Good morning from Harv's Honey. We're heading out to a side of our uh, bee yard to show you our apple, or excuse me, our Warre hive. Had apple may on the mind because I just did a video on that one. This is the Warre hive right here in front of us. Up here is a swarm trap for the Langstroth hive. I just did a video, uh, my previous one was on a Langstroth using it for a pollen feeder. Well, this is actually a swarm trap set up uh, in the late spring in hopes of catching a swarm of bees. We had no luck with it. It's totally sealed, so we're probably just going to leave it up through the winter. Should not see a swarm of bees anytime the rest of this year, probably till early spring. But what I want to concentrate on today is the War A hive. This is the hive that we will be offering to our customers with custom beekeeping services. As you can see, I'm doing a little walk around here of the hive. On the side we have handles, four boxes deep. The top we have a gabled roof. Of course on the ends we don't have handles. We only need them on each side. Main difference in this hive in your traditional Langstroth is the fact the Langstroth doesn't have these handles. They are cut into the boxes. I'll get into reasons for that later. And then we have a hive stand on the bottom, holds all this up. Normally as large as you would ever put these hives would be four boxes deep. Once you got above that, you probably need to be thinking about splitting your hive. You have so many bees in there at that point, they're probably going to swarm anyhow. But anyway, I just want to do a brief overview of the Warrior Hive. This is the gable roof. Normally it is not made of metal. This is an improvement I did on this particular one to trial it. They're normally just painted wood, which is a more natural approach. This is made to ventilate. You can see the way the end's made, and on a one without the uh, coating, you can really, the metal coating, you can really see the difference on how this, this ventilates. This should work, but it's, it's a trial, but it gives you the basic concept of how this works. I'm going to attempt to open this one-handed while I make the video. Okay, the top, as you see, is coming off. A little hard to do to uh, hold that phone and do this, but we're going to do it. You might see some crazy pictures while I'm doing it, but anyway. Okay, we've taken the top off. Normally it's far easier than that because you have two hands to work with. I wanted to give a brief overview of what the hive consists of. On top, this is called a quilt box. And all this is is a box that goes over top, helps ventilate the hive, control moisture. In the bottom of this box we have a screen, which we would normally fill this box with wood shavings, pine needles, pine cones, paper, something that will allow the moisture to be absorbed out of the hive. Natural condensation will not occur that way. It will take that moisture out. Because if you have condensation in your hive, then your bees will naturally produce that curing honey. In the wintertime, it could be detrimental to them. So that's why he developed this, to get rid of the moisture naturally. So when we pull the quilt box off, below that we have a piece of burlap. This also acts to absorb moisture out of the hive. It is merely a burlap sack cut to size with a flour paste, a whole flour natural paste on it to allow to dry. And the reason for that gives it rigidity. Normally your burlap would just flop, it wouldn't do well. This lets it hold up on top of the top bars, which this hive has, or you would also use them on frames. If you had a frame to worry hive, do the same thing. So we remove that to get down to the top bars. You can see this is propolis. This is what the bees use to naturally seal their hive. This hive went vacant last year. We have not used it, but I figured it would be a great one to show you how they work. To get into this hive, we would use a hive tool to actually pull these bars because they're going to be glued down and they're going to have comb going down in that box. I'm going to show you three different hive tools. This is a traditional hive tool made to pry up your top bars, pry your boxes apart because the bees will propolize them together, whatever you need to do. This is more designed for the Langstroth the basic traditional hive tool. Beside that we have a more advanced version, again more designed for the Langstroth. 
These don't work well on a Warrior top bar, and I'm going to show you why. But anyway, the advantage to this one, it has this hook on the end, which would let you get below your frames and hook them up a little easier and pull them up versus prying them like that. If I were to work a Langstroth, this would be my highest tool of choice, number one. This one, number two. They both get the job done. But we're not going to use either one of those in the War A. We're going to use a special hive tool. This one is designed specifically for top bar War A hives, which is what this one is. A little different, as you can see. It does have the flat end, which you would use that primarily should you need to pry your boxes apart, the bees and propolize them up. And you will also use the flat end to kind of pry these loose. But the difference is the hook on the end, which are a knife, actually. And what you would need this knife for is normally a comb would be built down this box, all the way down to the box below it. And the bees attach the comb to the side. So you would have to take this knife, put it up against the side here, go down, turn it, pull it up, cut your comb. Go over here to the next side, down, pull it up, cut your comb from the side of the box. And at that point your top bar, which imagine you had comb on here, would pull out and you would hold it like this. I'm sorry I don't have one with comb on it to show you. You wouldn't do like a traditional uh, full frame hive and do all this and hold it that way because if you did the comb would break and fall off. So you have to hold it horizontal and you would do your bee inspection. Uh, the top bars are set up in three different configurations on how to get your bees to build. This is one type. This is second type and this is the third type that I just dropped down in the hive I love videos anyway all this entails is a a uh, rebate they call it, it, it is a, a groove is cut into the top bar this particular one I used popsicle sticks and coated with beeswax as you can see the bees did build the comb out the one I just dropped was the exact same as this, but didn't have the popsicle stick in it. It was just the groove filled with beeswax, bees built comb on it. The last one, which is should work even better than those that I just try, I'm going to try this spring, is I've taken foundation, which all this is is beeswax with a little like honeycombs molded into it. So the bees gives them a starter strip, is what this is called, to let them start building their comb, which they will, and they will build it actually out from the top bar which will be hanging this way and down into the hive. As we look down in these boxes, I'll retrieve my top bar later, but I want to show you, you can see where the comb was built up to the side of these boxes. This is where I'm talking about. You see where each top bar was, you can see the comb. So you would go down between all the way down, you would get down here and then you're hitting, hitting your one below you. That would allow you to rotate this knife and you just slowly bring it up and cut. Go over to the other side, repeat, pull your top bar up. Another alternative is frames, which are not as natural that can be put in these hives and it allows easier, easier manipulation. When we look down in this hive, we see it basically looks like a chimney, four high, you'd have top bars on top of each of these boxes going down. The size of this box is smaller than a Langstroth. It more closely resembles a tree trunk, which uh, Ware designed the hives in the late 50s for that. He experimented with over 150 different hives, including the Langstroth, and he decided this was the most natural for bees, closest thing to a tree. He couldn't make it round to make it easy to build and easy to maintain, so he went with the square configuration. Another great thing about this hive that you do not get with the Langstroth, right now you see my crossbars are running perpendicular to the front, which is the entrance of the hive. This is be your configuration for the winter time. It's called the warm way. And what that is when the air goes in through the front entrance down here, it will go across your combs and then filter up and it keeps the bees warmer. Summertime, you would merely pick the box up, rotate it quarter of a turn, then you would have your frames going this direction, which is parallel to your uh, 
it's a parallel. I'm probably wrong on that. Anyway, it's running against the direction of your front entrance. So that way your, your airflow will naturally go in and come out the top. And it allows the bees to regulate the temperature a little easier. The reason I'm getting into all this about warm way, cold way, uh, you may or may not know bees maintain their temperature 95 to 98 degrees year round in the hive. Just trying to make it a little easier on them. Keep that temperature cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter. Okay, uh, that's pretty much everything on this hive. The other difference this one has that is not on the traditional war a is that screen bottom board. And there's pros and cons to both. I have run the solid bottom board, I've run a screen bottom board. It lets a lot more airflow get through the hive, but it makes it a little more difficult for the bees to maintain the temperature. Uh, probably the best of both worlds on this would be to have the screen bottom board with a uh, bottom below it, a, a sliding tray or something much like the uh, Apple May has to cut this off to uh, and also catch your pests that fall through there. The, the, really the main reason for this is to, to get the Varroa mite and the hive beetles to fall through that and go down to a board where you can catch them and hopefully uh, actually a tray with oil in it and it drowns them and kills them. So that is the big big thing about having a vented bottom board. We're on a solid bottom board, you're, you're not going to have that option. I've run both, similar results with both. So I would probably, from what I've fought with hive beetles, I think this will probably be your best configuration. But do bear in mind, this is the most natural method of keeping bees that I have tried. And I do like it um, for your hobby homeowner. As far as commercial beekeepers, they hardly use them. There are some in Europe that do. Reason being is it's just so much quicker to run with the Langstroth as far as high production. But then you're getting into all the chemicals and what have you to keep the bees alive. You don't need near the chemical and treatment with this hive. It is designed to let the bees, more of a hands-off approach, let the bees maintain themselves. You know, you intervene as needed. But uh, we'll get into more on how this works, especially with a working hive this spring, so you'll understand it. Another big difference on this hive, your war is you stack your boxes uh, uh, below wherever your bees are. Like with a Langstroth, you would have bees in the bottom box, they would outgrow it, you'd just stack another one above it. Well, on this one, which makes it a little more difficult, but I have come up with a hive lift to do it, and these boxes really aren't that heavy. You are supposed to lift the box up and niter it, which means you take a box below the existing box of bees and let the bees build down because in nature in a tree they would fly in a knot hole somewhere and more than likely they would build from the top down not always the case because it may be vacant above the knot hole but generally natural decay of a tree it'll go down and this is what he was trying to do with this hive is make it as natural as possible and one of the neatest things that i like about this hive when i first got into beekeeping several years ago there weren't a lot of people using these more and more starting to gravitate to them that want to do natural beekeeping but now you see the Langstroth has gone to a quilt box to help keep the moisture out of the hive a ventilation box to help keep the moisture out of the hive none of that was much going on when i first got into beekeeping nobody they kind of laughed at the idea with the uh war a it's like why, why are you fooling with all this you don't need to and now they've come to realize that it does make a difference so i will have to say uh as far as for the bees, I do believe this would be your best option for a natural and probably more healthy way and not near as much treatment hands-on. Uh, a Langstroth, you're going to be hands-on that thing a lot. This one is less, far less. So anyway, uh, we will be taking pre-orders for this hive if you are interested. Just send an email to harvesnaturalhoney at gmail.com. We're going to start looking at what kind of response we get and get an idea of what we need to gear up for for the spring of 2019. We will be offering these hives with bees and maintenance should you desire those options or without maintenance. If you want us just to set it up and then you take it from there, we'll do that as well. We're going to give you a lot of control over how you would like to have your hive installed, set up, and maintained. We'll offer as much or as little help as you so desire. But uh, we want to try to get more folks into beekeeping. And from our experience, the Bore Natural Hive for the homeowner, hobbyist, absolutely the best. Have a great day, folks.